I remember I roomed with him a lot, and I can remember that he never slept. And you'd wake up, and he'd be reading, and he had all kinds of botany books, and he'd sleep two to three hours at night. Now, he would have a tendency to kind of fall asleep in the afternoon when he was driving. You had to watch him. But uh, he was a very, very tireless uh, individual. Moved slow, and, but he was slow and steady and uh, always had his eye open for a new plant. And I was quite impressed with his character. The trips were one thing, but uh, his character was uh, another. It had a great effect on me in terms of uh, his giving nature. Uh, he doesn't fit in well with the modern society in the sense everybody in my business now wants to patent a plant. If you find a plant, blah, blah, you, in your nursery, whatever, you can patent it and you can uh, get 20 years where you have copyright royalties and, and make all this money. Lynn was way beyond money, and that's a different kind of a person than we have today. I think one of Lynn's, I think, biggest attributes, and you see it here today, is the way he touched people and the way he, you know, his his legacy is in the fact that people want him to live on in, 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 the, in, the, in the concept of, of bringing these wonderful plants back, you know, into, the, into, the, into future gardens. Um, and he did it in a manner that, that didn't utilize money. It utilized, you know, a, a helping hand or a, a comment or, or just the energy of his tireless work and dedication to, to the plants themselves. And, and I think people today realize, you know, in this, based on the ones that we saw in the room today, you know, that, that, you know, he was incredible, and in, in how many, how, and he's getting more energy after he's, you know, it's like a Van Gogh, you know, that he's getting stronger since his his departure, and so you know that that somebody is a whole lot more powerful when they can touch somebody in that manner. So that's all I would say. I'd say he's just touched a lot of people and in, in, in that vein his legacy will live on because they're not going to forget about him. Well, the other thing Lynn did is that he didn't he didn't withhold information. He wasn't he, did, he wasn't secretive with good information like He's got a secret plant he's going to grow and make a lot of money on. He just gave things away so quickly, so so um, so easily that I think people felt empowered to go start their own things. And so people put bits and pieces of Lynn's information and experience, and he started. And he would say, I'd hear him tell people, so you know, you ought to you ought to go start yourself a nursery and grow some of these things. And I, so I think Lynn was responsible for hundreds of startups in, in the horticulture and nursery and books, you know. He probably, you know, when he talked to Jill Noakes or um, any of the people that wrote books based on a lot of Lynn's uh, information, uh, Lynn was very empowering to other people. I hate that word because it's kind of overused, but, but uh, that's probably the best word to describe it. And w without any hesitation without any kind of s the slightest bit of jealousy at all. It was all enthusiasm and if you got it going he was excited and happy and um, <clears throat> you don't find that much. The, the excitement of finding, that part, that's the first thing probably that comes in. And then the excitement of sharing and getting and seeing it distributed and seeing it preserved. Uh, as I said, many of these things that uh, are dangerously, getting, getting dangerously scarce in the wild. Uh, we've seen that, you know, any number of times where you've seen a plant and, you, you know, you don't, it's gone the next time you go. Of course, you want people to enjoy it. Yeah, you, you want people to go away and, and uh, say, "Well, I'm going to do something with the environment. I'm going to, uh, you know, if it's just planting one tree or two trees or two shrubs or whatever, uh, that all helps." 
But I know it. I know I do want it to affect people's lives. And I, I know that Lynn wanted this, all this, the sharing and all of these plants to affect people's lives. He got a call one day saying that um, this gentleman needed some Camptotheca for cancer research, and the only place that he could get them were from California, and that it was very, very expensive, and they just needed to have a bigger um, group to work with. He needed more plants than they could afford. And so Lynn hung up and said, well, let me think about that just a little bit. And he remembered that something like 30 years ago, he had planted a Camptotheca in a man's yard in Kingwood. And so he went out, called him up, and sure enough, yeah, it was still there. And so he goes out, and there are seedlings coming up. And so he dug up some of the seedlings and brought them home. And Mike Anderson said, you know, and we soon had cornered the market on Camptotheca. And then uh, from all of those little babies, Mike Anderson said, we either have to get out of the nursery business and raise camp to thicker, or we have to do something else. And at this point was even after, I think, Lynn had been diagnosed with cancer himself. And they ended up giving these plants to the Stalin Foundation and to Biomed as for their cancer research. He was so humble, and, 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 and he may ask, you know, what, what do you mean by that? Well, he, he allowed everyone to come to him and bring, whether it was plants or information, and he let it unfold in your own mind. He didn't add to it by inserting his position in time, like, oh, I collected that. 18, you know, in 1980s over by so-and-so, where did you find it? It was like, oh, wow, you ought, to, you ought to do this with it, or you ought to try it in the ground, or uh, let me get some, I mean, I like some seeds of that. And that's what immediately stuck in my mind, is how differently this person operated, how he thought. And uh, the pictures give it away, if you notice, you saw all these pictures of Lynn, you notice he's always looking to the ground. He's always kind of, almost kind of bent over. It almost uh, kind of is a character of his, his humbleness because he rarely would look at you in the eyes when he was talking, like we'd, he'd never talk like this. It just wasn't, just wasn't in his character. It just didn't happen. And uh, when you meet people like that, it, it does stick in your mind.